Hey guys, it's Bitch Tozzy here and welcome to episode 80 of the San Marino Challenge. Now today's episode, as you can see, is going to be the Super Copper TIM final. And it is going to be against Juventus. They've, uh, they've sort of found their way back a little bit, Juventus. And they're starting to be a little bit more dominant. or well, they were last season, or the last two seasons really. However, if you look at the league table currently, they're doing pretty dreadful. Dreadfully, yeah. They're down in 10th position. They're essentially a mid-table side at the moment, which is pretty bad. Uh, they've... Uh, look, I want to say that they've lost a lot of their key players, but if you look at a lot of their players, they're still somewhat good. Um, it just seems that a lot of their younger players aren't as good as they used to be, which is interesting. And maybe they're not developing players like they used to at sort of around the start of the series as well. Of course, Formato was from the Juventus Academy, and they let him go for free, so... Yeah, they're not doing too well, Juventus. Anyway, as you can see from the league table, we're still currently in first place. Uh, we've only played a few games in that time. And now we've won 15 games and only drawn 3. Lost 0, as you'd expect. We are still dominating. Still have not lost a game this season. Although we have drawn Bayern Munich once again in the first knockout round of the Champions League. So, that'll be interesting. Obviously, two legs against Bayern is a tough ask, to say the least. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to those games, if I'm being honest. Uh, but anyway, the previous episode was the FIFA Club World Cup Final against Boca Juniors. We followed that up with a disappointing one all draw against Empoli. As you can see, Alessandro Nicoli, a former player of ours, we had him at loan, oh, sorry, on loan at the club, once again manages to score another goal against us. Empoli have been a pretty big thorn in the side since we joined Serie A, to be honest. And once again, proving proving a, a hard team to beat, we'll say that. Uh, but yeah, Albani got an equaliser in the 89th minute. Good stuff from him. Uh, we then smashed last place Fiorentina, 5-0. Vitek, Mazzari, Albani, Michelotti and Novi on the score sheet. And then we smashed Juventus as well, 4-0, Formato with a brace, Champelat with a brace as well, and then Cordon got sent off with two yellow cards, and I believe he got them within two minutes, so both yellow cards came in stoppage time. And the final game just played was a 1-0 victory in the TIM Cup first round against Pescara, and Yusufi got the goal just before half time. Now, in terms of transfers, have, haven't really done anything, to be honest. Um, these two deals were previously set up. We'll go into them in a second. Uh, but we did let one player go. Nicola Biordi, of course, one of our San Marone's players for the national team. Came through the academy quite some time ago, uh, back when we were in Serie B. Um, and yeah, we sold him for $1.1 million to Cagliari. Purely for the fact that he's 23 years old, he's not going to really develop anymore. And he was wasting away in the first team. He wasn't playing at all. I could have put him in the under-20s, but again, I think he can only play either one or two over 20 players. Um, so I don't even think he might have gotten game time with them. Could have just kept loaning him out, but then I would just have to keep paying his wages... Um, purely for the fact that teams probably aren't going to want to pay wages if I'm offering him out to them. Uh, so yeah, he left the club. He's in Serie B with Cagli uh, Cagliari, so I feel like it's a, a pretty good move for him. Now, in terms of the players we brought in, the first one was Luciano Brambatti. 18-year-old Argentinian. He was signed at the well at the start of this season in, during preseason. Um, however, he was still 17, and how it works is 
these South American players can't leave until they reach 18 years old. So, as you can see, came to us in January. 8.75 mil release clause from, I think it was Velez. Yeah, Velez. And, uh, yeah, he looks pretty good. And he's probably going to find himself as the starting right back. It'll be between him and Michelotti. It's going to be a tough one um, because he is so young and he's only just come to the club. But yeah, as you can see, buckle loads of potential. He's got a wonder kid description as well. And of course, we all like to see that in terms of their profiles. So happy with him. Can play center back and right wing as well. Albeit probably not very well. And the final player brought in was a cheap little signing. I just took a bit of a punt with. Abu Diallo came in for 140k from Avellino. Um, he's currently an attacking midfooter, although, of course, we are trying to retrain him as a center mid. Honestly, I just like the look of this guy. He has some pretty good stats, good passing, technique, first touch, good pace on him as well. 19 determination. He's 16 years old. Put him in the youth team, see what happens with him. One star, current ability, two and a half star. Possibly three and a half star potential. So, yeah. Like I said, just took a bit of a punt on him. And I'm happy to, to have him at the club. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into today's lineup for the Super Copper. Um, I believe it's in Italy this time. I think it's at the San Siro. I'm not 100% sure, though. Uh, this does look like the first team I'm going to play. Yeah. So, it's going to be Ingvarsson in goals. Michelotti at right back. Ivan and Sabir as the two center halves. Malin will be the left back today. Uh, Nalaskwain will be the defensive midfielder, with Mazari and Britos sitting in front as the two center mids. Cordon will be on the right wing, Fumato on the left wing, and then Champlat will be up front. The bench today will be Sogodogo, Servalini, Brambati, Marcio, Novi, Schmidt, Albani, Viviani, who came back from injury. I played him in the last game, and he picked up a weak injury, so he's still recovering from that. Might be a little bit injury prone now, which is a bit of a worry, but again, you know, he's pretty integral to the team, so keep him around no matter what. He's still club captain. Uh, we then have Sokolik, Pew, Vitek, Squizato, and yeah, you might be wondering why Yusufi is not currently in the team. And that is because PSG have bid, well, I managed to negotiate up to 62 million pounds for Yusufi. It's worth noting that his contract will run out next season. So he's currently only got about a year and a half left on it. Um, if I was to offer him a new contract, he wants like 140k per week, which is pretty ridiculous, but he is a very good player. And then out of nowhere, PSG have come in with this offer. And I originally asked for 65, went down to 62, they accepted it straight away, and uh, yeah, we accepted it as well, so he's probably going to leave for PSG, um, really sad to see, because he's been a, a quality player, I mean, he essentially kicked Antonio out of the side completely, and yeah, he was, he was pretty versatile playing the right wing role quite often as well. So yeah, unfortunately, he'll probably be leaving the club. Uh, the, the window's open for like another... Well, it's open for two days after this game. So we'll try and get a, a maybe a right back in on loan. Um, maybe I might find a, a cheap transfer. Uh, but we do have Brem Batty. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with him. And of course, we do have a youth player in the under-20s, of course, as well. Uh, with... Samaranee's nationality there as well. He's actually in the under-18s. And yeah, here he is, Zafirani. Obviously, his stats don't look that great right now. But he's only 16. Four-star potential from the academy. Dual nationality, like I said. Um, another player that will probably choose to represent Italy over us. But yeah, he's pretty good. And I think um, if we need him, we can obviously call upon him as well. Um, so yeah. Let's submit the team and get into today's game. Uh, as you can see, Juventus is playing a 
Moyes Keane up front, always a bit of a, a danger man against us. So hopefully we can uh, keep him quiet here today. Just going to tell the boys that I expect them to win the trophy. It's only the super cop up, but again, I like to win everything. And we're, I mean, who knows? We could, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I love to do this. I love to do it and get ahead of myself. But imagine going the entire season unbeaten. That would be something else. Fumato with a cheeky header, although I think he was offside there. Not really a lot going on in this game, to be honest. Only the uh, shots coming from us. They've picked up a yellow card now as well. As have we, Michelotti picks up a cheeky yellow. And we'll have to ease him off. Because if I don't, they love to pick up that second yellow. It's, uh, it just happens. It just seems to happen quite a lot. Nelascoin, Malin, Fumato shoots and he scores. Fumato this season, this might be his best season ever. He is absolutely on fire. I think at the moment, his average rating in all competitions is a 7.97 before this game. And that is... That's like Ballon d'Or quality. I would imagine if he wins it. That'd be that'd be incredible. That'd be a real achievement of the series. Especially getting him on a free transfer. When he was what? Like... Was he 20... 23 maybe? 20... 20? I, I can't even remember how old he was. I could probably check. But... I mean, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Because we signed him on a free. I don't know who's working at Juventus that let him go, but their mistake was definitely our gain. Chan Palat, Nalaskoin, Mazzari. We're passing the ball pretty well, as we're pretty much on the stroke of half-time. Michelotti with a, a decent shot. Saved by their goalkeeper, though. And we're into half-time without a shot to Juventus's name. Very impressive stuff there. Exactly what you like to see. And I mean, yeah, Moise Keynes has picked up a, a knock as well. Not going great. Champlat with a shot, and then he puts it in the back of the net. 14th goal of the season for Champlat there. Really happy I brought him back. Last season he didn't play too well. Albani sort of stepped up above him. Uh, but this season he's really solidified himself up front again. Which is good to see. He's also valued at about 40 million again. So essentially we could sell him on for a good profit again if it happens. I'm not going to you know, go looking for it. Anyway, let's make a couple of subs here. Bram Batty can come on for Michelotti. And uh, we'll actually tell him to tackle harder as well. Uh, and then I think we'll take Britos off. But for who? Yeah, Sokolik. And then we'll swap those two around because Sokolik is left-footed. So we'll do that. Wait for that to go through. Nalaskoin with a header. That's also saved by their goalkeeper. And then I think we'll go into the tactics and we'll put Bram Batty on to tackle harder. Um, Bram Batty is actually a non-EU player, so I'm not sure if we can sign another one. Anyway, Corden in behind. Oh my god, he walked that into the back of the net. What is Juventus doing? They are shambles. Absolute shambles at the back. Alrighty. So I'll make him tackle harder, and then we'll ease Ivan off, as he's just picked up a yellow card there. Good stuff. Man, like, I used to be somewhat afraid of Juventus, but, I mean, they truly have fallen from grace. I mean, I feel like Inter Milan, AC Milan are both a lot stronger as well. It's just a, a bit of a sad, a sad thing to see because Juventus, a lot of history, very dominant, obviously, in real life as well. And they were very dominant in the series when the save so far, well, up until like the last few seasons, 
Last year they did pretty well though. Um, I think what, they were in the final of the TIM Cup. I think that's why they're in this game. And I mean that's just unlucky, but I think he was offside as well. Uh, we'll make one more sub. We'll chuck. Who do we want to bring on? Do we want to go Albani? No, let's go with Servalini for Ivan. He's on the yellow card. Let's take him off. And we'll just make him tackle harder as well. Good stuff. And I mean, to be fair, Juventus haven't even had a shot on target yet. That is how bad things are for them currently. Pretty sad. Pretty sad, not going to lie. Can they get a goal? before the... That almost looked like a... A false free kick. Anyway... That's pretty much going to be full time. We've got about 10 seconds left. And San Marino are breaking forward again. I mean, Sokolik should have played that first time. And he would have put Champlat in. Anyway, Savia pumps it into the crowd. And I'm guessing that's full time. There we go. 3-0 victory in the Super Copper. Once again, we lift another trophy. I mean, we're pretty much winning everything at this point. Um, it's, it's just going to come down to... Well, the Champions League, first and foremost, and then, you know, developing our youth players and getting, well, dual nationality players to play for San Marino, and of course, getting single nationality players in for the national team as well, and developing those players. Anyway, we get 1.8 million for winning the Supercoppa for Marto, man of the match, as you would expect, and um, he's actually upset with me praising him. He's a little bit sick of it because he's been that good for this long. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap this episode up. Um, I'm not going to play the first knockout round on camera. Uh, if you make it to the quarterfinals, I will possibly do those. Uh, definitely we'll do the semifinal of the Champions League if we do make it that far. Um, but yeah, apart from that, guys, drop the video a like. It'd be much appreciated. Subscribe as well if you haven't. Uh, hit the notification bell. That should hopefully give you a notification every time one of these videos is uploaded. And yeah, apart from that, take it easy and goodbye.